Disability History, Panel 6, 1837 through 1848 A.D. Social reform and new ideas in education offer opportunities for people with developmental disabilities. Social Viewpoint. In 1842, Johann Jacob Guggenbull, a young doctor, was stirred by the sight of a dwarfed, crippled Cretan of stupid appearance mumbling the Lord's Prayer at a wayside cross. Guggenbull believed that his students could be cured through proper health programming and training, and opened a training school in Switzerland called the Abdenberg, 4,000 feet above sea level on a mountain summit. It was believed lower altitudes somehow contributed to Cretanism. For a while, the school was a tremendous success, but as Guggenbull traveled frequently abroad for long periods, and as the school became increasingly crowded, visitors discovered neglect and abuse, and the school was closed. While Guggenbull's school proved a failure, his early success with education influenced and inspired educators and reformers in the United States. Connection to Different Time in History the term Cretan applied to people with intellectual disabilities and stunted growth. It is based on the word Christian, with the purpose of emphasizing that despite physical or mental disability, they were nevertheless human beings. The word was adopted as a clinical term for someone suffering from dwarfism or mental retardation as a result of congenital thyroid deficiency. It has since become synonymous with fool. Social Viewpoint. In the United States, Dr. Samuel Gridley Howe, 1801-1876, through 1876, then the director of Perkins School for the Blind, established the Massachusetts School for Idiotic and Feeble-Minded Youth in 1848, an experimental boarding school in South Boston for youth with mental retardation. Howe's wife, Julia Ward Howe, was also a reformer and is famous for writing The Battle Hymn of the Republic. Medical Viewpoint. Many believed phrenology, the practice of studying the shape of the skull to determine human characteristics and functions, offered the only hope for understanding developmental disabilities. Phrenologists went on to say that moral, personality, and intellectual characteristics are also determined by the shape of the skull, which determines the shape of the brain. Once a highly respected science, Phrenology was discredited as scientists found no relationship between the size and shape of the cranium and the degree of intelligence. Moral Viewpoint Persons who lived in extreme poverty, including many with physical or mental disabilities, were often put into poorhouses or almshouses. Such establishments supported by public funds began in the Middle Ages as a means of removing economic outcasts from society. Connection to different time in history. Wealthier parents tended to keep their children with developmental disabilities at home. In the more rural areas, persons with developmental disabilities were often a normal part of the community. Social viewpoint. At the age of 19 months, Helen Keller lost her sight and hearing through an illness. With the help of teacher Ann Sullivan, she learned to speak, read, and write, and graduated from Radcliffe College in 1904. She lectured across the globe and raised money for education of many people with disabilities. Helen was also a member of the Socialist Party who tried to discuss disability in the broader terms of poverty and social inequity. Moral Viewpoint Social reformer Dorothea Dix advocated for better services for persons with mental illness and other disabilities. As she traveled across the country visiting jails, almshouses, poorhouses, and asylums, Dick spoke to many state legislatures, pleading with them to improve the conditions for the wards of the nation. Through her passionate appeals and with only the best intentions for persons with disabilities, Dix helped prepare the way for public institutions. Stereotype. Persons with disabilities as objects of pity, seen as suffering from some condition beyond their control, and therefore not considered accountable for their behavior viewed with a there-but-for-the-grace-of-God-go-I attitude. Paternalism and low-growth expectations are typical consequences of this viewpoint. Some poor houses were still in use until World War II.
Moral Viewpoint Training schools were considered an educational success, offering hope to many families of children with developmental disabilities. Across the country, parents wrote to state officials and school superintendents seeking admission for their sons and daughters. Some parents sought an education for their child, others simply needed relief. Nowhere is wisdom more necessary than in the guidance of charitable impulses. Meaning well is only half our duty. Thinking right is the other and equally important half. Samuel Gridley Howe, 1868 at the dedication in Batavia, New York, of an institution to serve people with disabilities. Social Viewpoint Another young and influential doctor was Edward Seguin, 1812 to 1880, considered the first great teacher in the field of developmental disabilities. He believed that mental deficiency was caused by a weakness of the nervous system and could be cured through a process of motor and sensory training. By developing the muscles and senses, Sequin believed his pupils, regardless of the level of mental retardation, would obtain more control over their central nervous system, thus allowing them to have more control over their wills. Many of Sequin's concepts are still used today, including positive reinforcement and modeling. There are two ways of spreading light, to be the candle or the mirror that reflects it. Edith Wharton, 1890-1945 